What is happening, fellow Cobras? Welcome back to Strike First Media and another interview on the channel. And for this guy right here, it's his second go around on the channel. So welcome back, Sean Kanan, aka Mike Barnes. Thanks, Cody. I really appreciate it. It's great to be back with you. Now, I, I do get paid twice as much for this appearance as the last one, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's Sean. I you were just telling me you've been crazy busy lately. I really appreciate you taking the time to for little old me to come on the channel. It it truly means the world, man. You know what? I appreciate it. I mean, you know, you're one of the people that is so supportive of not only me personally, but obviously the Karate Kid Cobra Kai universe. That you know, I like to, and I know most most of the guys and girls in the Karate Kid Cobra Kai universe like to do everything we can to uh, connect with the fans because we really appreciate. All of you. Uh, that means so much, man. And like, it's crazy. Me and a couple of my buddies were talking uh, like a few weeks ago. We were saying how there's not a lot of fandoms like this one because yeah. the actors, the creators, everybody that works on the show is so involved with the fandom. It's truly amazing. And I think we're we're truly so blessed and lucky to have you guys because Thank you me. guys spend, take so much time to hop on interviews with content creators who are just at the end of the day fans and it, it it truly means the world to all of us so yeah we we appreciate you guys and what you do not only on screen but off screen that really thank makes so much of a difference in our lives appreciate you back thank you absolutely so uh first question um so it's a pretty basic one i'm sure you heard before but i got a few unique ones so what was it to like to see mike barnes on the big screen back in this insanely awesome universe for the first time like as soon as I mean, I don't know if you saw it before it came out or if you saw it on launch day, but what was that experience like for you to see Mike back? I, I actually got to see uh, part of episode 10 when I went and did uh, ADR. And for the people that don't know what ADR is, it's additional dialogue recording, which means if when you're doing the scene, if there's if there's a noise, if there's a tiny glitch in the sound, you, you go into a studio and you re-record. Sometimes it's just words. Other times it's it's sentences. You're looking at the scene up on a movie screen, and then they they you hear these three beeps that go off in the headphone, and at the fourth where the fourth beep would be, that's when you start doing your line. So, long story short, that was my first opportunity to see what it looked like. And my wife was in the uh, she was in the studio with me, and she's kind of like my best barometer as to whether or not something's good. And I looked at her, and she's like, "Wow." She said, that's, you guys nailed it. And it just was great knowing that, um, you know, I, I saw it and I was like, wow, this is really, really good. It came out really well. I was very happy with it. So that's the first time I saw it. I didn't get to see anything from uh, the episode at the furniture store. Um, but I figured, you know what? Um, I, I know what we did there. And, uh, you know, if, if, if it comes close to what we did in episode 10, I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, it, the whole thing was a great experience. It really was. Yeah. Like when my, one of my favorite lines that you did was when you were like, you, t you ruined my life, LaRusso. You took everything from me. And I was like, holy crap, dude. I feel like he's yelling at me right now. Like that, that line was delivered so perfectly. Yeah. Like, I appreciate it. Props to you, man. That, that would, it gave me goosebumps and sh sent a shiver down my spine. <laughs> it was great. What was it? I mean, you, you've been gotten like before season five, before, because you were announced in those first set of images for season five. And you know what I'm talking about. You were asked so many times and you obviously couldn't say anything. So oh, how God. difficult was that to keep that for so many months? Boy. I'll tell you, it was really, really difficult. Um, you know, it, it was such a relief once I was able to actually tell people um, mm. because you know, I, you know, I'm not, I'm a pretty direct person, and I don't like being um, coy with people. And you know, the answers that I was giving um, were very vague and and you know intentionally coy and nondescript. You know, she said, "Keep the faith." You know, we shall see things like that. But I, I couldn't say anything. I mean, I, I was right. you know I wasn't able to say anything, and um, you know I wanted to tell everybody. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Because I was going back and forth, like, "Oh yeah, Sean's definitely going to be in," it. and I'm like, "Ah, oh, nah, I don't know. No, he's going to be in it." And then I, I kept going back and forth. So, but once I finally saw those images and I saw that you were, 
you were active on Twitter saying, oh, there's a big announcement coming tomorrow. Yeah. And then a bunch of the other cast members, I was like, oh, could, could this be, could this be a Mike Barnes reveal? And sure enough, it was. Yep. And yep. Then, then started the whole theories of, oh, where's, yeah, what's with all that yeah. furniture in the back? And the, yeah, the yeah. Cobra Kai community is crazy when it comes to theorizing. I'm oh sure my God, so many theories. And, you know, I have to say, um, not really any of them were correct. Right. I mean, you know, you know, how could they be? I mean, it was so abstract. Um, and, and yet that I think is what really helped make it such a compelling story and return. I mean, you know, and, and I love the fact that it wasn't just this redemptive thing with Daniel where, you know, uh, you know, Mike has changed and he's, he's apologizing, you know, once everything's taken away from him, we see the return of the bad boy. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was great, because, you know, different facets of the guy's character, um, rather than just sort of that one part of him that we all know uh from karate kid three exactly and i think that was one of the things that you wanted into this iteration like this present day mike barnes that was something that you wanted to see in his character you wanted him to or some you wanted to show layers of him kind of yeah. right but i definitely wanted to show that you know 30 years had passed and even if you became a worse person nobody stays the same and and i wanted to show that there was some kind of an evolution uh, either positive or negative, but just something that would allow me to play different, different colors, you know, different levels. I'm also an actor that's, you know, 30 years down the road now from when I got that role. And, and, you know, it allows me to bring a lot more to, you know, my performance, not just having grown as an actor, but also, you know, life experience. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a 22 year old guy anymore. Um, I'm a guy that's kind of, you know, been around the block. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I also wanted to try and find some moments where we could infuse some humor into it, uh, because I just think that humor is such an important part at the, at the you know, the, the core of Cobra Kai. It's right. really funny in a lot of parts. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I kind of was able to take advantage of that. And, um, you know, to their credit, the big three did, did not let me down and gave me the opportunity to do that. Absolutely. And because the creators they're so creative they don't pick like the easy way out they they like to make things keep things interesting in their own unique way and yeah. like mike barnes owns a furniture store i would have never thought of that and it works perfectly right go figure so, that that was pretty interesting so uh next my next question is uh what went into the creators contacting you because i'm sure i'm sure you have been waiting for had been waiting for the call well, for they, they know that I wanted to do it. I mean, I don't think it was any big secret. And I, I was communicating occasionally with uh, Josh Held mm -hmm. uh, social. And, you know, he he let me know at one point that I wasn't going to be coming on to season four. And that was disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Um, and then when season five rolled around, I was like, God, I really, I don't know. I mean, I, I hope I'm actually going to be able to get on the show. Um, and, you know, then he kind of got in touch with me and, said okay it's uh time to get in the game it's time to release the bad boy on the valley because <laughs> i was waiting for you to return in season four as well but uh in even season five i was like how are they oh now i remember that how are they gonna bring him in into this whole like dojo war between Kobe right. and terry silver and well, that, br that brings an interesting point up because now that uh you know now that miyagi is um set to uh participate in the uh, the big tournament hmm. i mean who better than mike barnes to join miyagi uh you know he, he's a national champion i mean you know you have to believe even more than johnny and daniel mike has the experience of what it takes to win at a tournament and um you know tournament fighting is different than um you know on the street fighting i mean there's there's hmm. common Dominators, but there's also things that are different that you have to know. And so I think that, you know, you know, Mike's stores are burned down. His wife presumably left him. Um, maybe, maybe going back to karate is all he has. And uh, you know, this is a this is a great way for him to, uh, you know, exercise his vendetta against Terry Silver and uh, solidify his, you know, uh, burgeoning friendship, rocky friendship, but friendship <laughs> and uh, uh, chosen. Uh, and, and Johnny, you know, I mean, they, you know, I got the feeling that by the end of the, the finale, there was, you know, kind of a mutual respect, budding friendship type thing. 
yeah, like you said, I think this the series is kind of on its way to outside of the valley. Like the valley isn't the only place anymore. It's looking way, way bigger, of course, not just Cal the small San Fernando Valley in California, but now the global level. And yeah, I definitely 100% agree. Um, I almost said Sean Kanan is the most experienced tournament fighter, but Mike Barnes oh, is the definitely got to go to uh, for in terms of that. So I 100% agree. I kind of want to ask you about like the filming experience because um, as it compares to the choreography for, of course, the Karate Kid and also you, because you were nursing um, an injured shoulder, I believe, at the yeah. time. Yeah, I uh, I had a dislocated shoulder that uh, was giving me a, a lot of trouble. It, it's still uh, an issue that I'm working with, uh, you know, physical therapy and everything. Uh, so, you know, there's some things I could do and some things I couldn't do. I'd say the biggest difference is that, you know, when we were doing Karate Kid 3, we had an extensive amount of time for um, uh, training and uh, rehearsing the choreography. The choreography for Cobra Kai um, was, uh, you know, it went much more quickly. Um, you know, it had to be picked up quickly. And, you know, once you get on set, you know, you have time constraints. So sometimes you have to cut parts of it out. Sometimes you have to expedite it. Sometimes you have to change things. Sometimes a good idea happens in the midst of the rehearsal and you go, let's keep that. So mm -hmm. much more, I don't want to say improvisational because it was choreographed by the fantastic choreography stunt team of Cobra Kai, but it, it, it wasn't, you know, several weeks of preparation for it. It was like really one day of, of oh, wow. you know, one, one and a half days maybe of working with the guys and, you know, to get it down. And, um, you know, I, I, I was, I was happy with it. I thought it went pretty well. Yeah, definitely. Wait, cause, cause that fight with chosen was crazy. I was like, Holy crap. After so many years, uh, Mike Barnes is like, after taking a break, like a hiatus from karate, yeah. he was still able to duke it out with and on chosen. Yeah, exactly. Chosen who's, Many people consider one of the best fighters. I mean, he is one of the best fighters in the show. And that was just pretty impressive to see that. Yeah. Just that from your, because I know you training even before Cobra Kai, you've continued your martial arts training. And just to see that the character still has it. And that was so cool. And when we saw at the end of episode three, I believe, when Mike sees his furniture store burned down, a lot of people were like, oh, is that all the Mike Barnes we get? And I was like, no, nah, I think they got something else for us. And then I was so glad when you came back. Like, you see the fireworks, show, and you're like, is that the finale? Is that the finale? And, uh, you know, you know the finale is coming. And so uh, I think they 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 paced it out really well. Um, and it was a, a great return back to the canvas after, you know, being on the sidelines for a little while. 100%. Uh, so you, you got to take, um, like, join into the show with, Actors that you've been familiar with, Thomas, aka Thomas Ian Griffith, uh, Martin Cove, uh, Danny, or Ralph Macchio, and you've also got to meet some new people. What was it like to just reunite with Ralph Macchio and Thomas Ian Griffith? And then, who were some of the people that you wish you got to meet that you it, weren't able to meet? It was great. I mean, I, you know, uh, Thomas, I, I've seen the least over the years. Um, Marty and I have kept in touch. Um, we did a play together years ago. Uh, Billy, I met in 1988 before I met mm -hmm. Ralph. Uh, and I've seen um, Yuji, uh, you know, from time to time. As a matter of fact, he came to my hometown in Pennsylvania for a tournament that was uh, celebrating my late sensei, William Stoner. And it, it was kind of surreal to have uh, Yuji, um, you know, in my hometown, but it was great. Um, geez, I, you know, I, I met most of the cast. I'm trying to think. I didn't get to meet uh, the actor who plays Stingray, and I, I think he's really uh. would have liked to have had the opportunity to meet him. You know, I, I, I got to meet almost everybody but it would be great to have the opportunity to work with them right yeah so you, so you met most of the um the teen or the teenage yeah. characters like yeah. tanner Hill, yeah. all that's that's do you want uh i guess we can talk about your brand new book that premieres yeah, sure. tomorrow yeah so. drop it. my brand new book uh welcome to the kumite which is the uh the sequel to uh way of the cobra 
And uh, yeah, it's the worldwide release tomorrow. Uh, once again, we're back in the dojo. I'm the sensei. And um, this book uh, picks up where, uh, where Way of the Cobra left off. Um, it's, it's more personal in, mm -hmm. in places where I, I talk about some of the challenges uh, that I've gone through, um, uh, you know, some of the struggles I've had and how I overcame them. And, um, you know, I would say that some of the big takeaways of the book, the tagline for the book is conquer your greatest opponent and your greatest opponent, of course, is you. And so how do you do that? Well, you do that by experiencing a metaphoric death every day so that you're reborn as a better version of yourself the next day. You know, you, you take into consideration all the ways that maybe you could have done things differently, do like a diagnostic, you know, tweak yourself, so to speak. And then the next day, you know, you got a clean slate, and you're emerging as a better version of yourself. And it's the idea of constant and incremental improvement. Um, so that you're making slow, steady improvements every single day. It's like, you know, when somebody says, if you improve, you know, 1% a day for 30 days, you know, you'll be a beast. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of the idea of the book. Um, I also talk about the necessity to stay out of the results and just refine your process. For everything we do, we have processes. I mean, think about getting in a car, you know, we have a process, you, you, you you check the mirror, you put your seatbelt on, you press the ignition, you look behind, blah, blah. All of those are um, subordinate habits that together build a process that allows you to effectively move your car and get to your destination and not have an accident, right? Well, we have processes with everything. So what I talk about is if you can build a bulletproof process that you continue to refine as new information comes in and you execute it effectively and consistently, you don't have to worry about achieving the results. The results will come. They may not look exactly like what you want the results to come, but you'll get positive results. And, um, you know, I, I find that in, in my life, I, I use an example in the book where I talk about, you know, a lot of times people say, well, how can you learn, you know, 30 pages of dialogue in a couple days. And I say, cause it's, I have a process and mm -hmm. I know that if I go through my process that I'm going to execute it the way it needs to be done and I'm going to get the results. So when I've got to be at work Friday morning, like today, and it's Thursday night last night, and I still am not, you know, a hundred percent off book. There's still part of my process that involves working with the other actors before I, I, I go to the set. Right. So mm -hmm. I know that, finishing my processes is going to allow me to be effective. So I don't get anxious. I don't, I don't sit around and go, Oh my God, it's Thursday night. I don't know all my lines. What am I going to do? I know it's going to work because I've built a bulletproof process. And if you can do that with everything, whether it's, you know, losing weight, whether it's performance at your job, whether it's working at your relationships, um, if you can do that, you're going to achieve a success. And if you're constantly working to improve your process, you're effectively conquering your greatest opponent which is yourself and you're becoming better each and every day wow that's that 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 sounds pretty freaking awesome to me so I, I i can't i can't wait to read it now absolutely after as soon as i finished the first one i was like is there another one coming so yeah. is do you have i don't know if you could say this but do you have a plan for like a a third book like can make it a trilogy or yeah, so my wife wrote the foreword for Welcome to the Kumite, and she, it's a it's a really quite a brilliant foreword. I'm really proud of her. And so for the third book uh, in the uh, series, we are going to do we're going to write it together, and it's going to be a relationships. It's going to be I don't want to say he said she said, but you know, having a successful relationship in Hollywood is not the easiest place to do it. Mm -hmm. Having a successful you know relationship in Hollywood. You know, working in the television and film industry more difficult, and and we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of the strategies that we use to be able to have a, you know a vibrant, fun, great relationship, and I think they'll apply whether it's um, you know a heterosexual relationship, a gay relationship, a marriage relationship, party, whatever it is. Mm. You know, when when you're in a relationship a romantic relationship with whoever there are certain common denominators you know um it, it's um you, you know there there may be 
you know, differences, but there are certain things that are kind of universal truths of what is necessary to do in a relationship for it to be successful. I, I just said universal truth. Um, one of the sections of Welcome to the Kumite, I talk about 12 universal laws and that the universe will not be ignored. And these laws must either be obeyed or you find yourself in a place where you're experiencing resistance in life. You know, people say, oh, I feel like I'm banging my head against a wall or I feel like I'm a salmon swimming upstream. Well, generally, that's because we're not living in accordance with one of the laws of the universe. And as such, we're meeting resistance. The laws of the universe are not for us or against us. They're neutral. They just are. Um, and when you learn what they are, you can learn how to make them work for you. You know, the most famous one is the law of attraction because it's got a great publicist because of the book, The Secret. But that's just one of them. Um, there's the law of vibration, for instance, which is that, you know, every single every single thing in the world, in the universe, um, vibrates uh, from the subatomic level, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I believe, and a lot of people believe that different emotions elicit different vibrations. We've always been told that opposites attract, right? Mm -hmm. That's real. That's not true at all. Uh, the only time that opposites attract is generally with polar opposites, okay? Uh, with, with magnets. But generally, like attra attracts like. I mean, look at the kind of person that, you know, you choose as a partner. It, most often, we have a lot in common with them, right? You may choose right. somebody that's that's an opposite that you're sexually attracted to or something, but to have, to have a, a connected relationship, um, generally it's like attracts like. And so the idea is that if you're giving, if you're operating at a low vibration from, you know, emotions like jealousy and anger and things like that, the universe is going to give you more of that because you're going to yeah what you have. But if you're operating kind of in a flow state, you know, and you're, you know, you're, you're exuding, you know, love, understanding, compassion, things like that. If you, you know, you believe that you live in a world of abundance, that you have enough, the world, uh, the, the universe gives you more. You know, if you, if you walk around and you're complaining, going, oh, I'm fat, I'm out of shape, I'm broke. That is the best way to stay in that situation. But if you, if you come from a place of going, you know what? I may not be where I want to be, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing better every day. I'm increasing my opportunities every day. I live in a world of abundance. It's coming. It comes. Absolutely. I and with all my heart. Yeah, me too. I, because I, especially with my situation right now, um, I'm, I keep telling myself your day is only as good as your mindset. And I really think that's pretty much exactly what you said. And it's, I'm seeing yeah. results right now. Because I just kept my head be down. Really, I kept, really kept careful. You know, be really careful, Cody, about the words you use. You know, with yourself. You know, you know what I mean. You know, we talk to ourselves a lot. I talk about it in the book. And you know, you can either be a cheerleader for yourself or a heckler. Okay. Right. And and you know, I, I I say in the book, look, there's enough uh, opinionistas and <laughs> um, you know, critics in the cheap seats. Uh, you don't need to buy a round of haterade. You know, because there's enough people that are going to say, you know, things about you to try and, um, uh, you know, sabotage your success. You don't need to do it to yourself. And and if you 100%. keep that positive mental attitude, that is what you're going to attract. It might not happen on your time frame. It might not happen as quickly as you want or exactly look the way that you want. But good things will come. I 100 percent agree. And to, to go back to what you were saying about how you don't think opposites attract. I agree, too, because if you're interested. Anything at all together? How are you going to make a relationship work? Absolutely. Absolutely. One person doesn't like like is like a vegetarian, and another person likes eating steak. That's not. Yeah. It's not going to work, you know. Yeah, and you know, I mean, un unfortunately, uh, you know, love doesn't conquer all. I mean, you you really do. Your ships have to be sailing in the same direction. You know, you have to know where it is that you both want to go in life, or you mm -hmm. can have. To that love each other, that are attracted to each other. But what happens if one person's dream is to become the vice president of this big ad agency, but that ad agency is in New York and the other person is living their dream being a, you know, a, a, a nurse or a research scientist or whatever they are in California. And, you know, they, 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 they move apart and think, oh, we're going to keep it going long distance. And it doesn't work that way. So you, yeah. you both 
have kind of a common sense of not what not just what you're doing as individuals but what you're doing as a as a unit as partners mm -hmm. yeah you gotta you gotta keep working as a team and not it's Absolutely. not like you against your partner you gotta yep. come together and work as a team 100 yeah. percent, or else it's just gonna you're gonna feel like you're always against your partner instead of working with them yeah and i i believe that 100 percent well Sean, thank you so much again for coming on the channel. It's it's meant the world. Thank you for answering my questions and thank you for explaining more about what fans and every and all the readers can expect from your new book. I'm certainly excited for it. I told you before, and I'm sure so many other people are tomorrow. It, um, it is absolutely my pleasure. I, I, I let me let me do a little gratuitous plug here. If you'd like to get a copy of Welcome mm -hmm. to the Cobra, you can only get it at wayofthecobra.com. It won't be on Amazon for several months. Uh, and tomorrow, if you're in the Los Angeles area, please come to the Barnes and Noble at the Grove. Uh, I would get there around 2.45 and it is going to be a fantastic meet and greet. I'm going to do a reading from the book. It's going to have a QA, and a and I'm doing all sorts of giveaways of merch and it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully I'll see you there. Okay. Absolutely. All right, Sean, thank you so much, brother. Okay. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you all so much for watching.